How many wants to do that? <laughs> right. Was this video useful? Yeah. Was it entertaining? Yes. You people enjoyed it, right? Well, this video is on YouTube. And this is how I marketed it. See that link there? That is an affiliate link that goes to Amazon. And when you saw the thing popped up in the video, that's also an affiliate link. They can click on it. So this video, we put it up on YouTube back in, uh, I think almost 2010, sometime in 2010, yeah, sometime in 2010. Now, this video happens to be, when someone goes to YouTube, and YouTube is the second biggest search engine after Google. Mm -hmm. So it gets a lot of searches. And Paperless Office gets searched about 8,000 times a month. And it just so happened when people search for Paperless Office, I'm number one. It's the first video that appears. And since I'm in a number one position, I get almost half the traffic. So this is the, uh, I guess, YouTube back office result. Uh, this is for last month. Last month, 3,168 people has watched the video. Total of 12,000 minutes. And these are the, uh, the Google ads that runs alongside the YouTube video. It made about $33. Okay. But 3,000 people every month watch this video. And that has always resulted in an average of 10 scanners being sold every month. And I make $20 per scanner. So this video is making me $230 a month for the last two years. And I have 900 YouTube videos. <laughs> That's affiliate marketing. So these are just some examples of affiliate networks that I deal with. Uh, you don't need to take any of this, but there's a, whole, there's a whole bunch of them. Amazon, Copiac, lots of them out there. As great as affiliate marketing is, there are some inherited, inherent downfalls to it that, doesn't, that makes it not so appealing. Uh, the main problem is the customer does not belong to you. In that YouTube video, when someone buys the scanner, the customer goes to Amazon. And Amazon will then, of course, try to market additional stuff to them. And if Amazon is successful, I don't get any of the additional upsell. I get the initial, I get paid once. Amazon gets paid over and over again, even though I refer the customer. The advertiser may pull the offer, a load of payout. Amazon may decide we don't want to offer that anymore, and then that thing is dead. They might lower the payout from 20 bucks to 10 bucks. Google may decide that we don't want to rank that video number one anymore. Let's push them down, and then it's dead. So that's the main problem there. Uh, competition could drive up the advertising costs. And most affiliate marketers, you know, they pay for traffic. And this is why affiliate marketers never will tell you what they're running, because they don't want the competition. It drives up the advertising costs to the point where they're no longer profitable. And you always got to hunt, constantly hunt for new offers. You always got to kind of... Most affiliate marketers have to keep hunting for new stuff to promote because if it's making money, rest assured, competition will come in to drive up the ad cost, or the advertiser will pull the ad, or pull the offer, and then you've got to keep looking constantly for new stuff and new stuff. This is Tyler Cruz. He's from a friend of mine from the 9 BC. He's an affiliate marketer. He does what I call hit and run affiliate marketing. Basically, uh, he promotes what's called email submits. Email submit is where you get someone to submit the email on a landing page, and if the person submits an email, you make about a dollar to two dollars. So what he does is he buys advertising, sends the traffic to the landing page asking for the email, and if they, they submit the email, he makes two bucks, one buck. So his object is to spend less money than he makes. And I try to tell him for a long time that, you know, what you have is not a real business, for the reason I explained earlier. What you have is a house of cards that's going to come tumbling down at any moment, because you're building a business for somebody else. Those emails don't belong to you. But he realized that, he acknowledges that, but never paid attention because this was, this was his result for this year. So in the first six months of 2013, Tyler generated $600,000 in revenue from those little $1, $2 email submits. 
and he spent $392,000 in advertising to do it, so he net $214,000, making a 55% ROI. And which explains why he wouldn't listen to me. <laughs> I, mean, I wouldn't listen to me either if I was doing that. However, uh, in July, that came, all came tumbling down. He hit a perfect storm. So he sent me this uh, little IM message. He says, all my campaigns died. I go, how? He go, competition and offers going down. So your income went to zero? Yeah. Damn, literally overnight. Yeah, advertisers pulled the offer. Google slapped the landing pages. Competition came in, no longer profitable. And his last month, I think he made about 480 bucks. <laughs> it's a drastic change, kind of going from almost 50 grand profit down to only a few hundred. See, there's a right way and a wrong way to do affiliate marketing. And that's, that's more of a game by being in Vegas. You know, you're gambling. Yeah, I'm going to put the money there and hope I make more than I get back. That's not a real business. Affiliate marketing is a real business. I want to show you how to do affiliate marketing correctly. All right. How I do affiliate marketing is four steps. I call it the four steps freedom formula. And the first step is to capture the lead. Don't give away the email to make $1. Get the email yourself. This way you own the customer and you can market that customer over and over and over again. Because real businesses are built on repeat customers, not one-time customers. And when you're doing hit and run affiliate marketing, you're just getting a one-time customer. And real businesses aren't built that way. After you capture the lead, next step is to form the relationship with the lead. Form the relationship. This is basically the ideal way to form a relationship is just to face to face saying, hi, how are you doing? My name is John. Form a relationship. When you're on the internet, we use email to do it. Then you want to establish you as the authority. People like to buy from people they know, like, and trust, but they also like to buy from people that know their stuff. So you want to establish you as the go-to expert in whatever niche you want to do. And having done this, then the last step is basically just to recommend products and services to solve their problem. If your customers have a problem. If you provide a solution, they will reward you for it. So they say that's the four step I follow. And it's what I do. That's how my entire operation works. 